children in this video we will learn to estimate the area of objects there is a lot of chaos in champapur today this morning a door has been found in the cave but this door can only be opened by the hand of one of the villagers the king of champapur has entrusted barbole uncle with the responsibility of finding the villager whose hand impression matches the hand impression on the door uncle immediately traced the hand impression on the door onto a paper in this way this paper has similar squares of 1 square centimeter each uncle then counted the number of squares covered by the hand impression to find the area of the hand impression it took a long time for uncle to do this process and finally he came to know that the hand impression is covering 130 squares the side of each square is 1 cm long therefore the area of this hand impression is 130 square centimeters now uncle made grid papers using some other papers too by making equal squares of 1 cm long edges uncle first took the impression of bunny's hand on a grid paper like this i will need to find an easier process to find its area thought uncle let me first draw as many rectangles and squares as i can in this shape saying this uncle made three rectangles in this way in bunny's hand impression now i will first find the area of this rectangle this rectangle has seven horizontal lines and each line has five squares in it this means there are 7 times 5 or 35 squares in this rectangle this rectangle has two horizontal lines and each of the lines has three squares that means this rectangle has 2 times 3 or 6 squares and this third rectangle has four horizontal lines and every line has two squares it means there are 4 times 2 or 8 squares in this rectangle now in the end i will count the number of remaining full half and more than half squares thought uncle uncle also found these numbers in this way now uncle added all these numbers to find the total number of squares in this way there are a total of 63 squares in the bunny's hand impression in other words the area of bunny's hand impression is 63 square centimeters but this is not the same as the hand impression on the door so uncle continued his search and now traced appu's hand children the impression of appu's hand is shown here can you find the area of appu's hand by the process used by uncle if you wish to you may find it by stopping the video you can also find the area of appu's hand impression by making rectangles in this way the area of appu's hand impression is 130 square centimeters appu's hand impression matched the impression on the cave door 
The king opened the door with Appu's help and gave him half of the treasure in return. Children, in this video, we learned to estimate the area of objects. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello children! In the previous video, we learned to estimate the area of objects. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Champapur has received bright sunlight after the rainy season. Let me make poppers, thought Chanda. Thinking this, Chanda made various kinds of poppers. I have poppers of these three shapes. I have to charge the highest price for the biggest popper and the lowest price for the smallest popper. But all three are of different shapes. Then how do I find out which shape poppers are the biggest? Chanda got absorbed in thinking. Just then, Appu came to her house. Chanda asked this question to Appu. That's it. It's very easy. Appu told Chanda and quickly drew equal squares of one centimeter edges on a paper. To find the answer to your question, all we need to do is to find the area of the poppers of these three shapes. The shape of the popper which has the largest area is the largest. Appu told Chanda. Appu then made outlines of poppers of all three shapes on the paper with the help of a pencil. Let's first find the area of this shaped popper. Let me first draw this rectangle in this shape here so that I can find it easy to find the area. Appu made a rectangle like this in the shape of the first popper. Now I will write down the number of squares that fall into these rectangles. Now I will write the number of full squares left, 16. And finally the number of the remaining half squares, 20, which is equal to 10 full squares. Now, this is very easy to find the area of this popper. We just have to add the numbers of all these squares. Look, Chanda, there are 175 squares in total in the area of this popper. In other words, the area of this popper is 175 square centimeters. Appu explained to Chanda. Oh wow Appu, this is very easy and fun too. Let me find the area of this popper now. Chanda told Appu. Then Chanda made such rectangles in the area enclosed by the outline of the second popper. She then wrote down the number of squares falling in those rectangles in this way. Now, Chanda wrote the number of the remaining full squares, 20. And then, she wrote the number of the remaining half squares, 28 or 14 full squares. In the end, Chanda used addition in this way and wrote down the total number of squares covered by this popper. 98. Appu, 
The area of this paper is 98 square centimeters. Chanda said excitedly. Now all we have to do is to find out the area of this last paper and then we will know which of these papers is the largest. Chanda told Appu. Children, can you help Appu and Chanda by finding the area of this paper? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. We can find the area of this paper by making rectangles and squares in this way. The area of this paper is 125 square centimeters. Chanda and Appu also found the area of the third paper. Look Appu, first paper has the largest area. It means this paper is the largest and second paper has the smallest area. It means this paper is the smallest. Chanda excitedly told Appu. Chanda thanked Appu for teaching her about area and then with his help packed all her papers. Children, in this video we learned more about estimating the area of objects through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Hello children! In the previous video, we learned more about estimating the area of objects through some interesting examples. In this video, we will see some of the misconceptions related to this. Raju and Bablu are out on a walk again today wearing their unique glasses. While wandering, they reached uncle's table shop. Uncle's shop has a square shaped table and a rectangle shaped table. Raju first looked at the top surfaces of both tables with his glasses and he could see the measure of the sides of both the tables like this. Raju excitedly told Bablu, Bablu, I can see the measure of the sides of both the tables through my glasses. The length of the longest side of the rectangular table, 30 cm, is much more than the length of the square shaped table's edge, 15 cm. That means the rectangle shaped table is much larger than the square shaped table. Bablu laughed and said, <laughs> Raju, it is not necessary that because the measure of the rectangle shaped table's edge is more than the square shaped table's edge, the rectangle shaped table is larger than the square shaped table. Raju did not think what Bablu said was true and both started quarreling. Seeing both of them quarreling, Uncle asked the reason for their quarrel. Look kids, if you want to find out which table is bigger, all you have to do is find the area of the two tables. The table that has more area is the bigger table. Uncle explained to the two children. Then Bablu saw the surfaces of those tables with his glasses. Raju! On looking through my glasses, I am able to see a grid paper being formed on the surfaces of these tables. We can find the area of the surfaces of these tables with the help of these. Bablu said excitedly. Children, if the surfaces of the tables are seen in this way through Bablu's glasses, can you find the area of the surfaces of these tables? If you wish to, you can stop the video and find the answer. 
there are 150 squares in the surface of the rectangle shaped table or the area of the rectangular table surface is 150 square centimeters and there are 225 squares in the square shaped table surface or the area of the square shaped table's surface is 225 square centimeters. Raju and Bablu also found the area of the surfaces of both tables just like you. Look Raju, the area of the rectangular table is 150 square centimeters and the area of the square shaped table is 225 square centimeters. So even though the measurement of the longest edge of the rectangular table is bigger than the edge of the square shaped table, the square shaped table is bigger than the rectangle shaped table. Bablu told Raju. Raju understood his mistake and both friends put on their glasses and started walking once again. Children, in this video we learned about some misconceptions related to estimating the area of objects. Hello children, in this video we will learn to estimate area using grid paper. Golu, Bunny and Bhola bought different types of biscuits from the market. Bunny, Bhola, look at my biscuit. It is bigger than your biscuit. Golu said to Bunny and Bhola. No, my biscuit is bigger than the two of you. Bunny told Golu. Friends, we can immediately find out whose biscuits are the biggest using grid paper, said Bhola. Bunny and Golu could not understand anything. Then Bhola made such equal sized squares on a paper. A paper made of equal sized squares like these is called a grid paper, said Bhola. But Bhola, how can we use this to find out the biggest biscuits? Golu asked Bhola. Bhola made the outlines of those three biscuits with a pencil on the grid paper. Bunny, can you tell me how many squares are there in the shape of your biscuit? Bhola asked Bunny. Bunny quickly counted the number of squares and said, 16 squares. And Golu, tell me how many squares are there in the shape of your biscuit? Bhola asked Golu. Hmm, uh, 15 squares, said Golu. And can you both tell me how many squares are in the shape of my biscuit? Bhola asked Bunny and Golu. 24 squares? 24 squares? Said Bunny and Golu shocked. Absolutely right. And do you know that the area created inside the boundary of any shape is known as the area of that shape. So, we can say that the area of my biscuit is larger than the area of both your biscuits or my biscuit is bigger than both of your biscuits. Bhola explained to Golu and Bunny. This is such an interesting thing you have taught us, Bhola. Let us all share our biscuits and eat them. Bunny said to Bhola. The three friends shared their biscuits and ate them with great pleasure. Children, in this video, we learned to estimate area using grid paper. In the next video, 
we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello children, in the previous video, we learned to estimate area using grid paper. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Raju and Bablu are watching TV at Bablu's house. Painting competition has been announced in Champapur. All the contestants have to make unique paintings. The most unique painting will be rewarded. This is being shown in the news on TV. Raju, why don't we make a painting on a leaf? Bablu said to Raju. Yes, Bablu, this is a very good suggestion. Let us both find one leaf and then whichever leaf is bigger, we will together make a beautiful painting on it. Raju told Bablu. Both friends began to find leaves outside Bablu's house. Both Bablu and Raju found one leaf each. Bablu, we should use the bigger of these two leaves to make our painting. Raju told Bablu. But how will we find that out? Bablu asked Raju. All we need to do is to find the area of these two leaves. The leaf which has more area is bigger. Saying this, Raju created outlines of both the leaves using a pencil on a grid paper. But Raju, the areas enclosed by the outline of these leaves have some full squares, some half, some more than half and even some less than half squares. Then how are we going to find their area? Bablu asked Raju. It is very easy. Can you tell me how many full squares are there in the area of the first leaf? Raju asked Bablu. Eight squares. Bablu quickly counted. Raju wrote down the number of full squares in this way. Now, can you tell me how many half squares are there in the area of the first leaf? Raju asked. Bablu looked closely and said, Six squares. Six half squares. We can even write them equal to three full squares. Raju added three to the number of full squares previously written. And now, Finally, can you tell me how many squares are more than half in the area of the first leaf? Raju asked. Two squares. Bablu said excitedly. Absolutely right. We'll count them as full squares. Now Raju added two more to the number of full squares. We will not count any squares which are less than half. Now look, Bablu, the area of the first leaf has a total of 8, add 3, plus 2, or 13 squares. In other words, there are 13 squares in the area of the first leaf. Bablu, can you now use this process to find out how many squares are there in the area of the second leaf? Raju told Bablu. Children, can you help Bablu in finding the answer? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. The area of the second leaf has 10 full squares, 4 half or 2 full squares and 4 more than half squares. And there are some less than half squares which we will not count. In this way, there are 10 add 2 plus 4 or 16 squares in the enclosed area of the second leaf. In other words, there are 16 squares in the area of the second leaf. 
Bablu also found the answer to this question just like you. Raju, there are 16 squares in the area of the second leaf and 13 squares in the area of the first leaf. This means that the second leaf is larger than the first leaf. Bablu told Raju. Well done, Bablu. We came to know which is the biggest leaf. And you also learned to find the area using a grid paper. Now, let us quickly take part in the competition by painting a beautiful picture on this bigger leaf. The two friends made a beautiful painting on the second leaf. Children, in this video, we learned more about estimating area using grid paper through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Hello children! In the previous video, we learned more about estimating area using grid paper through some interesting examples. In this video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Chanda wants to open a new restaurant. Chanda has to buy new plates for her restaurant. She has come to buy plates at Gagu's shop. I want to buy the biggest plates. Chanda told Gagu. Gagu showed plates of these shapes to Chanda and said, Chanda, all these plates are of new designs and in all these you can serve exactly the same amount of food. But how is that possible, Gagu? This plate is triangular. This one is square shaped. And this plate is rectangular. Because rectangle is bigger than square and triangle, the rectangular plate is bigger than both these plates. Chanda said to Gagu. Gagu laughed and said, <laughs> No Chanda, come, let me explain this to you using this grid paper. After saying this, Gagu used a pencil to trace the outlines of the three plates onto the grid paper. Chanda, can you tell me how many squares are there in the area of the rectangular plate? Gagu asked Chanda. Chanda quickly counted. 16 squares. And uh, how many squares are there in the area of the square shaped plate? Gagu asked. That's 16 squares too. Chanda said shocked. And now can you tell me the number of squares in the area of uh, this triangle shaped plate? Children, can you help Chanda find the answer? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. There are 12 full squares in the area of the triangle shaped plate. There are 4 more than half squares and 4 less than half squares. So we will count 4 more than half squares as 4 full squares and we don't count the less than half squares. In this way, there are 16 squares in the area of the triangle shaped plate. Chanda too found the area of the triangle shaped plate just like you. Hey Gaku, there are 16 squares in the area of this triangle shaped plate too. You are right, the shapes of these plates may be different, but their areas are exactly the same. Chanda said to Gagu. The plates of these three shapes are very beautiful. Give me plates of all these three shapes, said Chanda and then bought plates of all three shapes from Gagu. Children, in this video, we learned about some misconceptions related to estimating area using grid paper.
in this video we will learn to estimate the area of shapes Raju and Bablu have made kites Raju look how beautiful my kite is Bablu told Raju showing his kite Yes Bablu your kite is really beautiful but my kite is bigger than your kite Raju said to Bablu No my kite is bigger than your kite and more beautiful as well Bablu told Raju Let us draw outlines of both kites on a grid paper and find their areas One whose kite has a larger area will have the larger kite Bablu told Raju and then he drew outlines of the kites on a grid paper Raju immediately began to count the number of squares inside the outlines of the kites. Hey Raju, wait. I have an easy process to find the area of shapes. I will show you. Bablu said to Raju. Bablu first made a triangle in this way inside the outline of Raju's kite. Look Raju, This triangle inside the outline of your kite is half of this square and the area of this square is 10 times 10 or 100 square centimeters. So the area of this triangle is 100 divided by 2 or 50 square centimeters. In exactly the same way these three triangles are also half of these three squares and the area of these three squares is also 10 times 10 or 100 square centimeters therefore the area of these three triangles are also 50 50 square centimeters now This lower small triangle is half of this square. The area of this square is 6 times 6 or 36 square centimeters. So the area of this small triangle will be 36 divided by 2 or 18 square centimeters. Now this second small triangle just like the first small triangle is half of this 36 square centimeter This means that the area of this second small triangle is also 18 square centimeters Now finally We just have to add the area of all these triangles and we will know the area of your kite. In this way, the area of your kite is 236 square centimeters. Bablu explained to Raju. Oh wow, Bablu, this is very easy process. Let me use it now to find the area of your kite. Having said this, Raju drew such a triangle in the outline of Bablu's kite. Children, can you find the area of Bablu's kite by the process you just learned? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. We can find the area of Bablu's kite in this way. Bablu's kite has an area of 186 square centimeters. Raju also found the area of Bablu's kite just like you. Yes, Raju, you are right. Your kite's area is 236 square centimeters and my kite's area is 186 square centimeters. So your kite is bigger than my kite. Bablu told Raju. Let us go to the playground and fly our kites. Raju said to Bablu, 
and the two friends went to the playground to fly their kites. Children, in this video, we learned to estimate the area of shapes. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Hello children! In the previous video, we learned to estimate the area of shapes. In this video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples. Chanda was returning home from her shop. Just then, she saw a shiny paper under a tree. A diamond's outline is drawn on this paper. Find its area. Chanda read the instructions written on the paper. Chanda got excited. This diamond's outline is made of two equal parts, thought Chanda. Chanda then drew a vertical line like this inside the outline of the diamond. Because this diamond is made of these two equal parts, if I were to find only the area of this part of the diamond, then I would have to multiply the area of this part by 2 to find the area of the entire diamond, thought Chanda. Then Chanda made such rectangles and triangles in this part of the diamond's outline. This large triangle is half of this square. And the area of this square is 6 times 6 or 36 square centimeters. So, the area of this big triangle is half of 36 or 18 square centimeters. This small triangle is half of this square. The area of the square is 2 times 2 or 4 square centimeters. So, the area of this small triangle is half of 4 or 2 square centimeters. And finally, the area of this rectangle is 4 times 2 or 8 square centimeters. By adding the area of all these shapes, I will get the area of this part of the diamond. The area of this part of the diamond is 28 square centimeters. Chanda quickly found the area of this part of the diamond. Now, because the diamond is made of these two equal parts, she multiplied the area of this part of the diamond. 28 by 2. Okay. The area of this diamond is 28 into 2, 56 square centimeters. Chanda immediately wrote the area of the diamond as 56 square centimeters on that paper. As soon as Chanda wrote the area of the diamond on that paper, a diamond of 56 square centimeters appeared in front of her. Chanda could not believe her eyes. Now, this new puzzle appeared on paper. A uniquely shaped diamond's outline is drawn here. Find the area of this diamond and you will discover a unique treasure. Chanda read the message written on the paper. Chanda started looking for the answer to this puzzle. Children... Can you also find the answer to this puzzle by using the concept of symmetry that Chanda has adopted? If you wish to, you may stop the video and find the answer. We can divide this diamond's outline in equal parts like this. And then this part of the diamond can be divided into these triangles and rectangles. Now, all we have to do is 
find the area of these triangles and rectangles. We can add the area of these shapes and find the area of this part of the diamond as 90 square centimeters. And then we will multiply 90 by 2 to find the area of the entire diamond. In this way, the area of this diamond is 180 square centimeters. Chanda too, like you, found the answer to this puzzle and wrote the area of the diamond as 180 square centimeters. This time, as soon as Chanda wrote this answer on that paper, the paper disappeared and fruits began to shower from the sky. Chanda became very happy. She gathered some fruits and then took her diamond and happily walked towards her house. Children, in this video we learned more about estimating the area of shapes through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will see some fun concepts related to this. children, in this video, we will see some unique examples of finding areas of shapes. Bhola and Sher Khan collected money and bought cashew burfi and pistachio burfi from Appu's shop. Sher Khan, let us divide this cashew burfi and eat it in two equal portions. Bhola said to Sher Khan. Okay, but I have a condition. We will play a game. First, I will ask you a riddle. If you give the correct answer, you will eat the burfi completely. And if your answer is wrong, then I will eat the burfi completely. Sher Khan told Bhola. Bhola accepted Sher Khan's condition. Can you make this cashew burfi into two triangles of equal area by drawing a straight line? Sher Khan asked Bhola. Bhola first drew the outline of the cashew burfi on a grid paper like this. The area of this cashew burfi is 10 times 10. That's 100 square centimeters. If I draw a straight line like this, I will divide this cashew burfi into two equal triangles. And because both triangles are half of this cashew burfi, both of the areas of the triangles will be half or 50 square centimeters of the area of cashew burfi. Bola told Sher Khan. Sher Khan was shocked. Children, can you divide the shape of this cashew burfi by just drawing a straight line and somehow divide it into two equal area triangles? You can find a solution by stopping the video. Well done children, your answer is absolutely correct. We can make this line in this way too. Sher Khan gave the burfi to Bhola and Bhola ate it happily. Never mind, Bhola. You won't be able to answer my second riddle. Can you divide this pistachio burfi into a rectangle and two equal area triangles by drawing two line? Sher Khan asked Bhola. Bola started thinking. This question of Sher Khan is a bit difficult. Children, can you find a solution to Sher Khan's question? In this way, we can draw a rectangle by drawing a vertical line. And then, one can draw two similar triangles by drawing a slant like this. If we look closely, 
we will find that both the triangles are half of this square. The area of this square is 10 times 10, 100 square centimeters. Therefore, the area of these two triangles is exactly the same as half or 50 square centimeters of this square. We can make these two lines in more ways. Bhola could not find the answer to this riddle of Sher Khan. So Sher Khan ate that whole pistachio burpi and also taught Bhola how to solve this puzzle. Children, in this video, we saw some unique examples of finding areas of shapes. In the next video, we will see some more interesting examples. In the previous video, we saw some unique examples of finding areas of shapes. In this video, we will see some more interesting examples. At Raju's birthday party, Raju gave compass boxes of the same design to all the children. The next day, Pinky, Chanda and Tufan get excited and bring their new compass box to school. This is my compass box. Chanda said to Tufan, No. This is my compass box. Tufan and Chanda started fighting. Seeing Tufan and Chanda fighting, Pinky said, Look, I've used this square shaped stickers on my compass box to make my name letter P. This allows me to easily identify my compass box. Why don't you both use these stickers to draw the letters of your name on your compass box? Children, if the side of every square shape sticker used by Pinky is 1 cm, can you find the area of the letter P of Pinky? The length of the edge of each square shaped sticker is 1 cm. So, the area of each square shaped sticker will be 1 square cm. Pinky has used 10 such stickers in her name letter P. Therefore, the area of the letter P in her name will be 1 times 10, 10 square centimeters. Pinky gave 10 stickers each to both Chanda and Tufan to make their own letters. Children, can you use these 10 square shaped stickers to make Chanda's name letter C and the name Tufan T? If you want, you can find a solution by stopping the video. Well done, children! Let us see how many centimeters is the perimeter of P that Pinky has created. We can find it very easily. The measurement of the edge of a square is 1 cm. So, to find the perimeter of this letter, we only need to find the number of squares that fall in its edges and add the measurements of all those edges. In this way, Perimeter of Pinky's letter P is 16 centimeters. Children, can you now find the perimeter of the letters of Chanda and Tufan? Yes, the perimeter of the letter C of Chanda is 26 centimeters and the perimeter of the letter T of Tufan is 22 centimeters. Children, you have seen how the areas of the letters of Pinky, Chanda and Tufan are the same. However, their perimeters are different. It is quite possible 
that the shapes having the same area may vary in perimeter. Chanda and Tufan made letters indicating their names on their compass boxes by using those stickers so that they would never fight again about their compass boxes. Children, in this video, we saw some more interesting examples of finding areas of shapes. In the next video, we will see even more interesting examples related to this. Hello children! In the previous video, we saw some more interesting examples of finding areas of shapes. In this video, we will see even more interesting examples related to this. Tiles of very beautiful and unique shapes have become available in the market these days. Everyone is decorating their homes with these tiles. Babban bought tiles of this shape to decorate his house. Children, can you tell what the area of a tile of this shape will be? You can stop the video and calculate the answer. To find the area of this tile, we can divide this shape into squares and rectangles in this way. In this way, the area of this tile is 200 square centimeters. I can decorate my walls with these tiles, thought Babban. Babban started decorating his wall with these tiles in this way. After putting some tiles, Babban fell asleep. If Babban has so far laid tiles in this way, can you tell us how much will the total area covered by the so far laid tiles be? To find the answer, let us first find out how many tiles Babban has used so far. Can you answer this, kids? Yes, Babban has used six tiles so far. Now it is very easy. To find the total area, we only have to multiply the area of one tile by the number of total tiles. In this way, the total area covered by the tiles will be 200 multiplied by 6, 1200 square centimeters. Babban got up in the morning and decorated his entire wall with tiles. But Babban's wife Banno did not like the design of those tiles. Babanji, I did not like the design of these tiles. Why don't we put some other design tiles in our room? Banno told Babban. Babban has come to the market this time with Banno to buy his room tiles. Babanji, I like the tile of this design very much. Banno said to Babban, pointing to the tile of this design. Babban immediately bought tiles of that design and Banno and Babban returned to their home. On returning home, Banno said to Babban, Babanji, you must be tired. Why don't I decorate the wall of our room with these tiles? Saying this, Banno started decorating the wall of the room. Banno decorated the entire wall in this way. Children, can you tell how many square centimeters is the area of this wall? If you want, you can stop the video and find the answer. First, we will find the area of a tile in this way. The area of a tile is 288 square centimeters. Banno has used a total of 48 such tiles to decorate the wall. Therefore, the area of the wall will be 
288 multiplied by 48. 13,824 square centimeters. When Babban saw the wall decorated by Banno, he was very happy and thanked Banno for decorating their room so beautifully. Children, in this video we saw even more interesting examples related to finding areas of shapes.